In this video I'll explain how to set the axis breaks in a ggplot2 plot using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in the video I will show you an example and this example is based on the data set that we can create with lines 2 and 3 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data set is appearing which is called data. And if you click on this data set, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data set. And as you can see, our data contains six rows and two columns, which are called X and Y. And both of these columns contain numeric values. Now, if we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 5 and 6 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 6. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geomline, as you can see in lines 8 and 9 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that a new plot object is appearing at the top right of RStudio, which is called ggp. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 10 of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom right that we have created a new line plot in this typical ggplot2 style. However, at this point, you can also see that the axis breaks have been selected by the default specifications of the ggplot2 package. And in this tutorial, I want to show you how to change these axis breaks using some R code. So in the first example of this tutorial, I'm going to change the x-axis breaks. And for this, we can use the scale x continuous function, as you can see in lines 12 and 13. So in line 12, I'm first specifying the plot object that we have created before. And then I'm adding to this the scale x continuous function, as you can see in line 13. And within this function, I'm specifying the breaks argument. And to this argument, I'm specifying a vector object, which is setting the breaks in our plot on the x-axis. So if you run lines 12 and 13 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot has been updated. And as you can see, we have added axis breaks at the positions 2, 3, and 5 on the x-axis. Similar to this, we can also change the axis breaks on the y-axis of our plot. And this is what I show you in the next example in lines 15 and 16 of the code. And the only difference in these lines of code is that I'm using the scale y continuous function instead of the scale x continuous function that I have used in the previous example. So if you run lines 15 and 16 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated once again. And as you can see this time, the axis breaks that we are using in our plot have been set to 2, 3, and 5 on the y-axis. So in examples 1 and 2 of this tutorial, I have explained how to add axis breaks based on a vector that we have specified manually. However, it's also possible to add axis breaks based on a sequence, and this is what I want to show you in the third example of this tutorial, starting in line 18 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm again using the scale x continuous function, as I already did in the first example. However, this time I'm specifying to the breaks argument a sequence, and I'm specifying this sequence based on the seek function. And within this function, I'm specifying that I want to create a sequence between the values 1 and 6, and the intervals of this sequence should have a length of 0.33. So if you run lines 18 and 19 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated once again. And as you can see this time, we have inserted a break at each point in our sequence. So in other words, with breaks of 0.33. So in this tutorial, I have explained how to change the axis breaks in a ggplot2 plot using the R programming language. However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail, and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments. And make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. 
That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.